It's Wes here, a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, so here is the Nikon Z7 II. And uh, I just shot some street photography for the first time. I had to Google a couple of things. Um, luckily, I found two of my favorite features now after using the Fuji are the, the dials to control shutter speed and ISO. I kind of uh, have been used to the Canon mirrorless system, which uh, allows me to adjust those on the touch screen. But now uh, I found the, the front dial does the aperture shutter speed on the back dial, and those, those are pretty good. Uh, I'm getting used to the camera, and I, I really uh, think the quality of the image is good. Autofocus seems to be a little bit slow, but I'm getting used to the camera, so I'll just cut it some slack. But I think the autofocus is going to be a little bit um, dodgy compared to what I'm used to with the Canon, or even the Fuji, honestly. But we'll put it through its paces, I'll get used to it, and we will see. Let's go. It's Wes. Welcome to this video. Today, I am excited to share with you the Nikon Z7 II used for street photography. Now this is the first time that I put my hands on the Nikon and you can see from the very get go, <laughs> the very, watch me struggle with uh, opening the card slot. I, I know where it is. I've actually looked in it before and I just can't figure out how to open the catch. And it's the simplest of angle changes that I need to make. But you know, just enjoy me struggle. Uh, and in fact, that might be a theme of this video is is struggle and most of it is just unfamiliarity with the controls with the ergonomics with the where to put the SD card all right so let's uh, tune in and we're gonna speed past the next five minutes where I try to figure out how to adjust the focal point uh, which was a big breakthrough and uh, right here I'm just setting the uh, the image quality to raw and JPEG because I wanted to see what that would be like but let's fast forward through and jump to when I actually start uh, shooting, not practice photos, but when I start walking. And let's enjoy uh, some moments with the Nikon Z7 II and street photography. Fast forward, boom. <laughs> Auto focus point size on Nikon Z7 II. And what I was struggling with here is the size of the autofocus point was was kind of like a third of the width of the screen. And so it was if I was trying to shoot the white car in front of me, it was catching the tire, but it's also catching the background. And I'm really comfortable on the Canon using pinpoint or one spot autofocus. And I I just was frustrated <laughs> and you can hear it in my voice right now I was frustrated because I didn't know how to reduce the size of the autofocus point it was kind of set to wide so it was grabbing this wide area and I really need to fix that so let's flash forward to where I fixed that now a lot of times in street photography videos that I do I feel lame I feel really lame uh, well here I'm lame because I can't lift the back screen one, actually, before I talk about how lame I am in another way, I was surprised that this screen wasn't fully articulating. Uh, the, the D750, the D850, amazing world-changing flagship DSLR cameras. And then the Nikon Z7 came with this kind of street photography fold-out, look-down screen. And uh, I, I just thought it was, didn't have the functionality that I expected. Uh, but let's go back to how I was lame in the first way. I feel like the first shots I always take are the most basic, like I'm seven year old and somebody just gave me a camera. It's a stop sign, it's some leaves, and I'm just, you know, going through the paces. Can I pick out a focal point on the front of this hedge, on the back of the hedge? And so it, it seems very rudimentary, but I guess it's good to share that, you know, uh, this is how I warm up. This is how I, and this is a new camera, so this is how I'm getting used to the controls. Uh, I will approach people later and ask them for shots or, or take pictures. Uh, you can hear me sigh. I'm looking at my watch. I'm doing this shoot uh, before work, so it's about 7 a.m. I have about an hour. And this walk was 45 minutes, but we're going to fast forward and we're going to give you the highlights. And here I'm just shooting the building. I'm walking down, and I know it's a little slow right there. The focus. <laughs> I'm commenting on the autofocus, and it, 
uh, actually, this is something I shot with it for 45 minutes. So and every time I hit for, uh, the shutter button half press, it goes click, click. Kind of rack focus to find the so I was point. doing this focus not hunting uh, exactly thing exactly. that was not very desirable. And it was uh, objects or subjects that weren't moving. Now here was kind of cool shot through the window. I thought I like those layers of glass and the reflections and that depth that those provide. Um, kind of a more sophisticated image, if you will. But I, I was unhappy in general with the autofocus performance. Now, I think... I know this camera is better than than I made it out to be. <laughs> so here, I'm just shooting and trying to get to focus on a tree. Uh, so I'm going to meet some people coming forward here, and we're going to do uh, see some samples of how it performed when I tried to shoot somebody's portrait. So let's skip forward to there. I am testing this camera. Does anybody mind if I get a portrait of them? She's on every website there is. <laughs> 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 She's a model. No, no, no. Yeah, just get a picture, guys. What are yeah. you? You're just testing it for fun. Yeah, it's a new Nikon. A uh, friend lo loaned me. So. <laughs> so everybody's down, maybe one by one. Yeah. <laughs> you're not sure. You know charges. You have no idea. Where? Yeah, right here. Right here. Right here. Like where? Oh, that's great. Uh, maybe right in, in the middle here and get the nice depth of field in the background. All right, three, two, one, and let me do one like this. You definitely, you definitely. Three, two, one. It is. There we go. Three, two, one. Okay. You gonna see? Oh, nice. <laughs> Anybody else? Nobody Where were you guys? You were in an exercise class or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Anybody else? Any I'm takers? Good. Thank You're good. You, <laughs> Thank you. I don't, I don't follow me that one. <laughs> now, putting the Nikon Z7 II through its paces, with that encounter, I realized I autofocus was not on. And so I thought so to myself. I gotta turn on I autofocus. Yes, I did because it's not fun to try to line up that pinpoint spot on the subject's oh, eye. You want the camera to automatically grab that and uh, eliminate that work for you. Plus, I wasn't yet comfortable on how to move the focus point. Uh, there was a joystick on the camera. It was also touch screen, touch and focus, just like the Canon R and the Canon R5. Uh, but I didn't discover that till later. You can just tap the screen and put the fo focus point wherever you want it. So in this next encounter, I had eye autofocus on and I was really, really enjoying it in a much better way than the last uh, portrait uh, with the young lady. Excuse me, can, I'm testing a new camera again. Can, do you mind if I take a picture? Yeah, yeah. All right. We're gonna be famous with yeah. <laughs> Can I get a picture of you? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. You got enough room for him? That's good. We're, good. We're good. We're good. This camera's magic. Thank you so much. Now this gentleman, uh, the one on the left, had been in another street photography video I did with the R5 versus the Fuji XE4. He might start to charge me for appearances Hello. in my videos. I'm just testing a new camera. Do you mind if I take a picture of you while you're working? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now here, I was super pleased by this point with the uh, eye, the face tracking and the eye autofocus. Um, it seemed, I really wanted to get down low and kind of get the table in the foreground and see if it stayed on the subject's face. Cool, which thank you. I found it did. Well, I looked in the screen immediately afterwards. I you didn't think it did, anyway, but it did. No. Now he just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to post uh, his testing pictures. It. So I'm not going to show those. Um, but I found that once I had the eye tracking, uh, the eye autofocus on, uh, I was happy, very happy, as happy as I was with the Canon performance. It, it really was great. And these are just shots I'm walking by and grabbing a few minutes. On. It's not a portrait session where I'm taking my time, so I was really happy with the performance. Now here I was just playing with the, the moving cars and trying to see the shutter speed and the performance. I would say all throughout the, the experience I had, um, inconsistencies in when it would trigger a shot um, and so I, I, I just tracked that up to um, to 
learning curve on my part. I don't think the Nikon camera is faulty, but it was interesting when I had pinpoint autofocus on, um, a lot of times it wouldn't grab. Now that could be because I also had um, eye autofocus on um, and maybe like this sign right there, I shot it twice. Once it was in focus and once it wasn't. So that was um, confusing to me. But again, the, the pictures where the camera nailed focus and it performed as I expected. Uh, there no complaints at all. So I'm gonna fast forward down the street and get to some of my other favorite shots. And what's cool about uh, walking the same area is you get the same subjects like this display, the shirt with the gold chain. I took it on the Canon R5, the Fuji X-T4, X-E4, and here on the Nikon Z7 II. So I'll put up all three shots and see if you can guess which was taken with which camera. Uh, uh, by the way, I'm shooting in this video uh, with a, a 1.450 mil Nikon lens, and so first time using that lens too, I was really, really happy with it. And I see these uh, lights up here, this kind of string lights along the, uh, I was going to say balcony, it's not a balcony. Uh, the word will come to me, it's a, an awning. And so I wanted to get one of the string lights in focus and kind of it's see uh, how the 50 the millimeter look. lens looks great. Yeah, the bokeh looked great on this lens with the uh, subject close to the lens in focus and then the, the bokeh in the background. I was really happy. All right, let's fast forward and jump to another interesting point. Now I see this bed of flowers and uh, I wanted to test the point, single point autofocus. And I found that it was hard to grab and trigger a shot on an individual blossom. But, um, you know, I just spent a, a few minutes here and I did get it. And so uh, the 1.4 depth of field was very, very They're shallow. Locking on. So I probably so actually need to shoot at f4, f5.6 to get change the whole focus mode. And so, so um, I, I think my realization right, here I just go pinpoint. is I was turning off face and tracking. Uh, now I'm getting a hang of flipping out the screen. again because I didn't hit I top right pinpoint. You have to hit OK. So now it's here I'm just getting that workflow down of switching between focus modes. And I, I get a decent shot gorgeous? here. Probably needs a, a bigger depth. Of now this is an area I like. There's a nice cupcake shop, uh, Hoppa Cupcakes, but it wasn't open. Now I was just stopping to do a little social media post, a little boomerang with uh, featuring the, the camera on the uh, little green metal tables here. And there's a coffee shop where I've taken one of my favorite all-time shops uh, shots a few years ago. It has this bright gold yellow wall. Now, these gentlemen who walk in right here, I ended up asking them if I could take their picture against the orange wall. I thought the orange yellow wall and their orange vest would be just an interesting, not necessarily contrast, but I don't know, just artistically I thought it'd be interesting because the orange and the gold, uh, but they declined, they turned me down. Uh, so I just kind of cruise around the coffee shop looking for interesting subjects, uh, testing the pinpoint autofocus. And uh, so there's a little skeleton in the corner. I grab a shot of that doll. I think what I found is the, the white balance inside was a little too warm, so I played with the white balance. And so that was the first time using that uh, control on the Nikon Z7 II. And, it, it worked okay. Um, I try to put people at their ease and always uh, immediately, you know, decline. If they decline, I just uh, immediately uh, say no problem. I don't push. Uh, but here are these little sugar skulls or uh, Dia de los Muertos uh, artifacts on the counter. I was practicing getting uh, focal point, uh, the pinpoint autofocus on the skull. And so I'm um, also adjusting the white balance here. So hopefully these shots don't look too orange and they reflect kind of the cool decorations in their environments. Now, at one point I had tried to line up, there were kind of people sitting in the background. I was just testing the depth of field shift, um, kind of the rack focus between two photos. So I'll see if I can put that up here where it focus on the, the person in the background, focus on the, the skull. And I think these came out pretty good, but we'll take a look. So I noticed the gentleman in the corner of the frame in the red jacket. As I leave the coffee shop, I notice that he exits after me, which is fine, but he was also watching me in the shop. And so I just a word of caution or warning when you're out doing street photography, you have a nice camera okay, or so that was 
or a nice, uh, not nice camera. <laughs> Either way, you yeah. might be a target for some people who might be interested in, in trying to grab your camera and run or bothering you. But I went down this building. I knew he had exited the building, and so my plan was to double back. And you'll see him in the frame here. He's coming at me, and then I just turn the other way so it make it more obvious if he's trying to follow me. Uh, he would have to make a turn. So now here I turn and I focus on the magnolia, partly to keep my view of that gentleman, but also there's a magnolia flower in this tree that was, I thought, a really good subject. And um, I was just, uh, notice in the video, you can't see it in the GoPro view here, but the, the flower is a beautiful subject. I think if I leveled it, color corrected it, it could be a print, um, a printable subject, printable um, image. Uh, but also in this video, I talk about ergonomics, autofocus, speed, ease of use, but I don't really talk about resolution. But this image was one that I think the resolution of the Nikon Z7 really comes into play. And you can, um, you can crop in and that resolution really supports you if you want to do a print. Now I turn here to see if there's another flower. And sure enough, there was another flower on that tree, but it was pretty small. So I, I didn't shoot it. I'm just going to fast forward here. Usually when I'm out shooting and I ask for permission to take photos, I try not to bother young people because I just feel like I don't want to ask, are you, you know, 18 or above? Uh, but this young person was walking and I asked her for a portrait. Again, just ask. I got turned down. It was fine. Uh, Hello. And I'm just testing out my camera. Do you mind if I take a picture of you? Oh, no worries. <laughs> And so she said she had to get to school, which was great. She was prepared with a, a, a reason not to engage with me. And I totally respect that. Um, I, again, I try not to bother young people. Um, I thought she was maybe college age. And maybe she was going to college, going to school. Uh, and here I know I'm about ready to head back to the, uh, the car, but there's one more block and we're gonna get a couple of cool, some of my favorite shots here on the, the next block. Uh, there's a couple of homeless people here. Uh, I practiced on them with autofocus. I typically don't shoot street people. Um, I just feel like it's, it's a vulnerability that I don't wanna uh, capture and explore or exploit, I guess, is my feeling. But I did practice here. Uh, there's a gentleman or a lady on a scooter and I did try to get focus uh, on the moving scooter I knew where the spot, the single point autofocus point was on the screen, but I didn't have it to my eye and I, I missed two out of the three shots, uh, but I, that's on me. Now at this point, I'm about 20 or 30 minutes into the shoot and I make a really great discovery. I've been trying to figure out how to adjust the shutter speed and the aperture with physical controls. And I didn't realize that there was a dial on the front of the camera, not on the top like the R5, but on the front of the camera. And so once I discovered those controls, I had uh, a, a newfound enjoyment of the, of the Nikon Z7 II. One more time around the block. All right, so this is shutter speed, aperture. It's good. Just fired off three that didn't focus. It's on auto. That's just bizarre. Feels a little soft. Pinpoint, so I'm just choose Y there, yeah. Again, when you choose the focus point, I'm not used to my info. You have to do wide area and hit OK, and then that's how it works.
Alright, so we just uh, just finished shooting some street photography with the Nikon Z7 II. Just put on record to see what it does. Let's see what it does. So this is, I don't have a screen, so see what it does. It's Wes, you're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first person to tell you that. All right, so here is the Nikon Z7 II. 